We need to vote for the legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She has proof that courage, conviction, and moral clarity can change the world without being vicious and mean. She and Justice Scalia disagreed on everything, but they were friends. They disagreed. We got to get back to that. Politics has become so ugly and mean and disruptive. But we can be the voices for justice in her name. We have to make our voices heard. You have to vote. You have to vote because while Donald Trump fails to condemn white supremacy, we can deliver on racial justice. Donald Trump, he doesn't believe there's any such thing as systemic racism as a problem. He won't even say Black Lives Matter. Well, you know and I know Black Lives do matter, and so do others. That's why this season of protest has broken out all across the nation. Let me make it clear. Protesting is not burning, it's not looting, it's not violence, and must never be tolerated, and it won't. But these protesters are a cry for justice from communities that have long, long had the knee of injustice on their neck. The names George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake, I've met all the families. They're not soon going to be forgotten. Not by me, not by us, and not by this country. We're going to inspire a new wave of justice in America. But true justice is also about economic justice, justice in education, housing, access to capital, good paying jobs. And by the way, it's long overdue time. The minimum wage in America is $15 an hour. And by the way, my economic plan has been analyzed by the guys on Wall Street. You know what they say? They say my plan will create 18.6 million good paying jobs, 7 million more than he's going to be able to create if he got elected and a trillion dollars more in economic growth. What he's forgotten, when you all do better, everybody does better. Everybody does better. It's not a zero-sum game. It's about financial stability and giving families of color a real shot to own a home, to start a business, to send a child to college debt-free so he can build the wealth, pass on opportunity, down through generations. Is that how every white family that came from my background got it? They were able to get a house, build an equity, pass it on, and grow it. That's what we're going to do. But we have to vote to ensure the full promise of this country. We have to vote for a new Cuba policy as well. This administration approach isn't working. Cuba's no closer to freedom and democracy today than it was four years ago. In fact, there are more political prisoners and secret police are as brutal as ever. And Russia, once again, is a major presence in Havana. So much for his policy. President Trump can't advance democracy and human rights for the Cuban people or the Venezuelan people, for that matter, when he has embraced so many autocrats around the world, starting with Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Trump is the worst possible standard bearer for democracy in places like Cuba, Venezuela, North Korea. For my entire career, I stood for democracy and human rights, for freedom of the press, assembly, freedom of religion, and against dictators, whether they're left or right. Folks, it's unconscionable that the Trump administration says it cares so much are deporting hundreds of Cubans and Venezuelans back to their dictatorships. Trump loves to talk. But he doesn't care about Cuban and Venezuelan people. He won't even grant temporary protective status for Venezuelans fleeing the oppressive regime of Maduro, who I've met with, and he's a thug. Folks, I will. But we have to vote. And finally, we have to vote to meet the challenge of the climate crisis. This guy doesn't understand much of anything. You've all seen the impact more than most. Devastating hurricanes that lay waste to whole communities. Economic toll is astounding. It grows every year. And the human toll is worse 
lost lives, lost homes, small businesses shattered, first responders put at risk. When you talk about global warming, Donald Trump thinks hoax. Well, then he says we should, by the way, do you know this is the guy who is the uh, stable genius? Remember, he's the guy that said our problem in the Revolutionary War, we didn't have enough airports. God's truth. He's also the guy, when he talked about how many bad hurricanes are coming across the warm waters of the Atlantic from Africa, he said, maybe we should nuke them. And also, by the way, you know, you know, windmills cause cancer, according to him. Look, what's this guy talking about? But we know that we've got to do something about it. Combating climate change means jobs. We can unleash the American ingenuity and manufacturing to build a stronger, more climate-resistant nation, creating millions of new, high-paying jobs. And we can change the path we're on. But we've got to act now. This country can't afford to wait four more years of Donald Trump's denial, who thinks the only responsible, only responsible, to the people who voted for him. I don't see the presidency that way. I don't see the presidency that way. In 2008 and 2012, Florida placed their trust in me and Barack. And each day we were in office, we worked as hard for you and the entire country as we did, not red states, blue states. It was always the United States of America. Folks, I was reminded of that earlier this month when I visited the sacred grounds of Gettysburg. Abraham Lincoln taught us that we need to unite our nation, that a house divided cannot stand. And I was reminded of it earlier this week when I went to Warm Springs, Georgia, reflecting on FDR taught us about the need to heal the nation. I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I'll govern as an American president to unite and to heal. I'll work as hard for those who didn't support me as those who do. That's the job of the president, a duty of caring, caring for everyone. And you, too, have a sacred duty, if I may say, and that's to vote. It matters. Florida matters. In these final days, stay empowered, stay optimistic, stay united, make a plan and vote, and help get out the vote. Visit IWillVote.com slash FL. Return your ballot today if you haven't done it so far. Or you can get to vote early in person through November 1st. But you've got to get out and vote and make sure everyone you know votes as well. Folks, there's nothing we cannot do from beating the NRA to restoring rationality in the climate. I'll never forget what President Kennedy said when he promised to send us to the moon in his speech. He said, we're doing it because we refuse to postpone. That's what Americans do. We refuse to postpone what is needed. I refuse to postpone the work America must do now. There's nothing, this is not hyperbole, there is nothing beyond the capacity of the United States of America. There's no limit to America's future. We're the only country, in every crisis we've inherited, we've come out of it stronger than we went in it because this is the United States of America, and the only thing that can tear us apart is America itself. A president like Trump, a president like Trump who appeals to our fears, a president who pours gasoline in every flame he can find, a person who knows the only way, the only way he can win is if he divides us on race, nationality, national origin, gender. Look, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. We got to show them who we are. Article today in the press. I want to read a quote from it. It says, Never before in modern presidential politics has a candidate been so reliant on wide scale efforts to depress the vote than Trump. He knows if you vote, he can't win. Why do you think they're spending so much time keeping black folks and brown folks and poor folks from being able to vote? Why make it so hard? Because he knows when America votes, they reject people like him. 
We choose hope over fear. We choose unity over division. And we choose science over fiction. And yes, we choose truth over lies. So folks, it's time to stand up, take back our democracy. We can do this. We can be better than what we've been. We can be who we are at our best. As I said, the United States of America, there's nothing beyond our capacity. I promise you. I promise you. And I promise you, if you elect me, when I'm wrong, I'll acknowledge it. I'll take responsibility. But I tell you what, I'm going to unite this country, and we're going to move like we haven't in a long time. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops.